working on the 95 GT once again. Last year the 5.0. So we got the intake manifold, the upper intake manifold up out of the car. The colder intake. And we're getting the lower out because if you can see we got some some oil or some kind of seepage there. And it just collects in that area right down there. It doesn't really leak anywhere else. So my suspicion is that it's the lower intake manifold gaskets and the gaskets in between the lower intake manifold to the top of the motor. So that is why we are doing all this. I finally, I mean, I bought this thing years ago and I just finally used my fuel line quick connect tool set. I used the red for the smaller line and the green for the bigger line. The smaller line being the smaller diameter here and the main line being the thicker diameter here. The sizing is the red one was a half inch and the bigger green one was a five eighths. And I got those disconnected. It's a little, you can see a little spring all the way around in there. I had to push that in with the quick connect tool and then wiggle this out. It, it didn't want to go at first, but with some persuasion, some wiggling, it came out. And I got all of the connectors for the injectors disconnected. Be very careful, those are very brittle. You don't want to break those, any of the tabs. And I got to clean out all of the, I got some like acorns. I have a cicada wing, you know, Last time cicadas came by was uh, a couple years ago now. So that I'm, so, I'm amazed they didn't burn up. The wings didn't burn up in here in this hot environment under the hood. So yeah, so once I get all that cleaned up, then I can, um, there's some little screws, one here, one right there. I can now... Um, I can I might leave the fuel rail on I'll see if I can or I can just take it off we'll see what I'm gonna do but I definitely want to get all this cleaned up so when I do take off the bolts for the lower intake manifold all those acorns and all that dirt and debris doesn't drop right down to the engine okay so this is step one and I'll be back I gotta head up I'll be back for step two all right so I Got cold feet for a second. I didn't want to go this deep and do taking off the intake manif the lower intake manifold because I realized all this other crap's gonna come apart. But then I said, screw it. We've come this far. It's leaking. Let's just do it anyways. So in order to do this, I gotta drain the coolant because this upper radiator hose goes into this housing, and we got a bolt here and bolt there to take that piece off the front of the lower intake manifold and then one of the heater core hoses you get a plug here um, then I got to figure out this this is a steel part of the heater core heater hose line that it runs all the way there and then it does a turns into rubber does a loop and into the firewall but point is I got to drain the coolant before I can Take this housing off, so which I did. Ugh. So it looks pretty green. Don't mind the dirt and debris in it that was in the bottom of this uh, little container that caught it. Just want to document everything as I go along. <clears throat> I'll replace the upper and lower radiator hoses just to have new hoses on there. And a lot of steps involved. I also got to take the uh, distributor out. It'll just make it easier when I go to try to pry the, uh, the manifold off the top of the motor. And yeah, very, very involved job, but we're gonna, we're gonna get it done. While I'm here, I might take the valve covers off, clean them up and paint them, and put those back on. The uh, paint's coming off those a little bit. The strut tower bar, I'm also gonna take to my shelf. Uh, some of the paint is peeling on that, so I'll probably wire wheel that and repaint it black. And 
that's the update. Okay, putting these back together. Um, passenger five, six, seven, eight. <clears throat> Driver's side, one, two, three, four. Okay, this is the sweaty mess I am for two, two rubber hoses. Check it out. One that is the uh, outlet for the radiator core, or the heater core, I mean, sorry. And then one that goes to the thermostat housing just to get this lower intake manifold off. Whew. And then the connections on the other end I have to take off because this fitting goes into the intake lower intake manifold. And you can't just pop this piece off, or at least not that I'm aware. I don't want to break it. And it's got a little bracket that's welded to both of the metal tubings of the heater core lines. So I have to take it off from one end and from the other end just so I can get the lower intake manifold out is a lot of work and it's uh it's slow going but i'm getting there <laughs> it's a sweaty mess i have to tell you guys as i update you again this uh this job is way way involved so be advised if you're going to do the lower intake manifold removal gasket replacement on your 95 mustang or your fox body mustang i'm sure it's similar I've taken most of the lower intake manifold bolts out. The way you're looking at them are in order from driver side, passenger side. And we're looking, these two are the rearmost and the back of the engine made towards the firewall, towards the cockpit. And as we go forward, these are towards the um, front of the car. Now these two in the front, unfortunately they broke and I had it when I was Feeling it with the ratchet, I, they were so tight I couldn't even get them to break loose or budge with just a 3 8 ratchet. So I had to put a little cheetah bar on it. I worked it to the righty-tighty just a hair, maybe free it up something down deep in there. And then when I went to go lefty-loosey, snapped both of the front two. So maybe that's a common problem with age. Something to keep in mind. The Thankfully, all the rest are intact. You can see we're missing one. I just took the nut off of it because there's a bracket off of, let's take you right, where do we need to go, right here. There's a bracket off the heater core line that goes over the stud, so I have to get this off to get to the last bolt to take it out on the passenger side. Problem is, this heater core line, I can't really lift it up high enough to like sneak it off the stud and off to the side, and if I could figure out this guy right here, towards the front of the intake manifold, if this guy pops off of the, the nut below it, I don't know if it does. I don't want to break it. Um, but if, if I could figure out, if I could just pop this off, it would make my, this job a whole lot easier. Because I wouldn't really have to worry about disconnecting the heater core lines. This heater core line, I still would have to disconnect this one. And I'm probably going to replace these anyways because they're super old and probably brittle with age and so many heat cycles. But yeah, if I could just figure, I got to look this up. If there's something about just being able to pop this off the top of this, I don't know though. I really don't. That would make this thing a whole lot easier. I'd be much closer to removing the lower intake manifold. So that's the update. And hopefully I can do something with that. Because it's just that one bolt there. And then I gotta disconnect the fuel lines again, which I have done before. I have the tool, and then just uh, disconnect the rest of the sensors for the the injectors, and then gently pry, and we should be it, home free. But I gotta I gotta figure that out. This is the main culprit here. Stay tuned. <laughs> okay, guys. YouTube has an answer for almost everything. So, I thought that this piece couldn't come off the steel fitting below it, uh, which I think I'm still technically right on that. What I did figure out is I can put a adjustable, I have a 10 inch adjustable, I open up to about inch and eight, 
my inch and eight wrench is at the shop. So I can grab it at work tomorrow, but I can put it around the nut and I can twist it and the top black part will stay in place as I will demonstrate here. Oh, okay, so you see it's very, very tight coming out. The threads do have some sort of um, thread sealant on them, but it is moving and hopefully I'm not breaking this um, the black housing up top. Hopefully it's the uh, the fitting coming off the steel nut up into the black housing just is just supposed to spin in there. So I'm just gonna keep loosening it little by little and this will make things a lot easier. I should actually have the intake manifold out tonight before I have to go to bed. So happy, happy update after the <laughs> break in the two front for most intake manifold, lower intake manifold bolts. Progress. By golly, I said it was coming out tonight and it is coming out tonight. Everything is finally, finally disconnected. I got that fitting out. As you can see, I just uh, unscrewed the inch and eight nut out of the, uh, the threaded portion of the lower intake manifold. And the black part of the housing stayed intact, nothing cracked. Okay, so, and I put my pry bar here, prying off of the, um, this bracket for, uh, let's see, what would this pulley be? And this is the power steering pulley, so that bracket. Put a pry bar here. I put it up underneath the, uh, what appears to be the thermostat housing, but right behind it onto the meat of the lower intake manifold and the pry bar off of here because you don't want to pry off any pulley bill, plastic, nothing. And I just, on the handle part, just gave it a good couple whacks. And as you can see, we have lift off. We have lift off. So now I just got to wiggle it out of there, make sure I don't tear up nothing on the way out. And this thing is out of the car, finally. This is, uh, no one sh should have to do this. Might as well just uh, pull the whole motor and throw in uh, some high-powered uh, 306, 331, 351, whatever, 347, what have you. All right, next update. And I told myself it couldn't be done. Wow, it's finally, finally out of the car. Here's underneath. About to clean up all the old... Uh, all the set wall, clean up the surfaces, scrape off any old gasket material. That's what it looks like. Definitely leaking out the front. Ugh. Here's what's going on on top of the motor. Goodness, all of that work just to get to what? $20 pair of gaskets. About to do some RTV in the front. This section broke off on either side. So I'm guessing the new gaskets will come with this, this uh, special rubber here. There's one on the back as well. Get a side view. That's the old gasket material. Now you can see these threaded holes look good down the line however the front that's where the bolt broke off and there's not much meat sticking out so that's gonna be a tricky one definitely gonna have to put a butane torch on that or the yellow the yellow gas <clears throat> it's late and then one right where is it not there here that's where the other bolt broke off of. Not much sticking out of there, but we're gonna have to get that sorted out. Um, you tell me how that looks in here. Doesn't seem bad. Gonna have to get that for 28 years. And obviously gotta clean out the debris. Acorn stuff that fell down in there. But we'll get to that. We will definitely be getting to that. Probably covered up with a rag for the night till I return. 
to work on it some more. Goodness, goodness, what, what a pain to get all this done. But I uh, have to put some new thread sealing on that. Might take off the valve covers if I'm really getting into it, repaint those. You know, while I'm here, I guess, just get into it. Start calling this the Money Pit Mustang. I mean, it was running okay, but it always just runs okay. There's always some other issue that crops up uh, for me to address, just so it doesn't turn into a bigger issue down the line. All right, that's your update. That is the complete removal. I didn't show you each and every step, but so the videos on YouTube for that, but I was able to get the gist of it, and now I know. All right, see you later.